I wanted to add to this collection, and it just so happens Jackson had a watercolor sale on him. Are you ready? Let's take a quick peek. Did you see him? I know, I'm so excited. I can't wait to share them with you. These are all the beautiful colors I got. I am so excited to have new colors of Roman Schmal to my palette. I wanted to explain to you how they come. Each one of these has a piece of like wax paper over the top and then it's wrapped in foil and then it has the label over it. Sometimes this wax paper sticks so all I do is I stick it in the freezer for about five to ten minutes and then let it sit bring it out of the freezer and then let it sit on your desk for about two minutes before trying to pull this off because I find that it doesn't immediately lift but once it cools down or warms up I should say it is easier to lift off so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that also none of the pans are marked so I use a Sharpie on mine and I put like a code, this is Roman Schmal, R-S-Z, just for myself. Each pan has a number. So I include the number on the edge and then I write the name as well. A lot of people put the pigment number over here too. I don't do that. I don't, I'm not really concerned with the pigment, pigment numbers at this time, but I do keep all of these. I have a little folder that I tape them down and each one of these shows the pigment numbers. Let me show you that. Here it is. So you can see on the end here, really small. There you go. So this is PB60 and PB7 and this color is indigo blue. So each one has that. So you will see the number, the pigment, and then the actual name. Just so that you know. <laughs> I keep mine all in a binder clip until I'm ready to tape them all down. That way they're all in one location. So let's start swatching. I've already got my leaves drawn out. And just like the other ones I did, I'm going to do mass tone in the bigger one and a light, lighter tone in the smaller leaf. Get more on center here. Got a little paint dish in case I need it. I'm gonna start with buff titanium. Now I bought buff titanium because you know I love buff titanium. <laughs> and I haven't been exploring other brands of buff titanium, so I thought, why not? Jackson was having a really good sale on these paints, and so I put it in my cart. What I like about Jack's uh, Roman Schmal colors is they are very smooth. They go on like just butter. I mean, I'm not having to dig in them. I didn't pre-wet them, anything. They just come out so nice. I wish they did come in a tube. I like to um, use the tubes every now and then. And I've been buying the full pans. They sell them in full pans and half pans. And for my set, I've been buying full pans because they're only like $2 difference. And I would rather have a bigger, a bigger pan for myself. I'm going to dip my brush in some water and just thin it down. Should have erased my lines here to make them a little lighter. I will do that with the next ones. And then on the previous pages, I didn't splash them until the end. So at the very end, I splashed them with some water and lifted with a paper towel just to see what happens. And I'm going to do the same so that I'm consistent in my book. So if you're like, Kelly, splash quick, <laughs> don't worry, I will splash at the very end. The next color I have is Cypress Burnt Umber Deep. I do love browns and it was between this one and raw umber and I usually use raw umber but I thought I don't have really many burnt umber so let's give it a try. This is pretty. I like rich browns.
I'm using a Stillman Burn Beta Series sketchbook here. I believe it's 8x10. It is a mixed media paper, so it doesn't really have the texture of the cold press that I really enjoy. So I don't know if these really granulate or not. Wow, that's a pretty brown. <laughs> now I'm just going to get a lighter tone. So all I'm really doing is dipping my brush into water. I will hardly ever use a paint fully mass tone like that, but I do use lighter colors all the time. The next color is Nickel Titanate Yellow. I know you're like, why in the world are you using this yellow? <laughs> I wanted to just try it. It looked soft. And it looked a lot more buttery than like a lemon yellow. And with this shopping spree here, I tried to pick a red, yellow, and blue because I want to create some color wheels and see what other colors I can get with that. So if you're interested in seeing that in a video, let me know. I've got some great reds and a lot of different variety of them. All right, rinsing my brush. Such a pretty yellow. It seems to be more on the green side than like the red side so it doesn't have much orange in it which I really like my yellows to be on the greener side they're looking great so far my continuation of reds here I have a really cool one we'll get to that next this is mummy transparent red I didn't know what to expect of this. I usually don't really care for a real transparent color because it just takes so long to get the color out. I like to just dip and go <laughs> instead of sit here and play with it and really try to get it onto my brush fully loaded. You can see how light that is. Okay, rinsing my brush. Now this next color, I'm gonna see if you can see this on the, sh on the paint. Do you see how it's shiny like that? It almost looks like it's got gold or like um, holographic paint or something. I don't know, it looks pretty interesting. I'm, gonna, I'm hoping that it dries like that as well where it gives us a little bit of shine. This is Azo Red. But look, when you, when you get the paint wet, it kind of goes away. So I don't know what to expect. <laughs> It is a rich color, let me tell you that. 
I was looking for a true red that I could mix some color wheels with. Look at the juiciness of this color. This is amazing. What are you thinking? Is it gonna show that metallicness when it dries? I sure hope so. Okay, I'm gonna dip into some water. That's very pretty. It's very kind of pinkish. Um, for the slightest tone. This would be a great color for peonies or roses. That's lovely. The next color is Indian Red. I know this is a pretty solid color. Look at that. Wow, is that gorgeous? <laughs> if you don't like heavy colors, you will not like this color at all. Gorgeous. Gonna splash my brush around a little in the water. Look at that. Think of like a um, terracotta with a bit of red in it. It's really pretty. I know how many times can I say pretty in this video. Sorry about that. <laughs> the next color is autumn green. When I got my first art haul, they were out of autumn green every time I tried to get it. So I'm glad they finally had it in and I could order it. From the website, I thought this would be a yellow green. I thought it would be a little brighter than an olive color and I know it's going to be a great mixing color. Roman Schmal has all of their pigment numbers on their website if you're interested in what the pigment numbers are. Right now I'm working in my sketchbook so that it really doesn't bother me knowing what the pigments are, that kind of thing. But I know a lot of you are interested in the pigment colors, so I would suggest going to their site and just checking it out. Dipped in water. Look how much yellow this is this color has. It's beautiful. Okay, to finish this off, I'm going to be doing two blues. I got Indanthrone blue and Indigo blue. Indigo looked a little dirtier and Indanthrone looked a little brighter. So I know a lot of people use French ultramarine for mixing in their color wheels and stuff. It's just a color that I really do not like. I prefer Indanthrum blue because it's a stronger um, 
more like a deep blue jean kind of color. So that's why I picked in Danthrone instead of like a French ultramarine. And again, it's just personal preference. There's nothing wrong with it. If you like French ultramarine, use it. <laughs> Look how juicy that color is, wow. This is why I like Indanthrone. It's just such a rich color. Yum. <laughs> Okay, I'm rinsing out my brush here. All right, we're on to indigo. I also wanted to say thank you so much for subscribing. I got over the thousand mark, which was so exciting, you guys. I just, I couldn't even believe it. So thank you so much for watching and liking what I'm having. I enjoy reading your comments. I love seeing the thumbs up and knowing that you subscribed to me was such an honor. So thank you so much for that. I have loved bringing all of this, all of these ideas and different colors and sketchbook practices to the channel. And I appreciate you being here. This is just what I was hoping for, that it was a little deeper, a little darker, but still vibrant and beautiful. It was between this and Payne's Gray, and I'm really glad I went with this. I don't really use Payne's Gray ever, but I have lately fallen in love with Indigos. Wow. <laughs> Rinsing my brush a little. Let's get a lighter value here. You can see that one's a little softer. I'm anxious to see how that one dries. It's been dried, and what I'm going to do is splash the page, let it sit for just a couple seconds, and then lift with a paper towel. So I'm just sticking my fingers into my jar of water here and flicking some water on there. Trying to get it everywhere. I might have to come back with a brush to make sure everywhere is covered. Okay, I'm letting it sit. I think that's long enough. Their colors don't lift the same, which I find really fascinating. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to wet these again specifically and see if I can get them to lift. I don't know if you remember, but I had a hard time getting the heavier ones to lift last time. Even their Titan buff is not lifting. And I don't know if you see this, but a little bit of granulation in that autumn green. What? <laughs> you know I'm loving that. I think we have just what's lifting is going to lift and what isn't isn't. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is 
write the names and then I will be back. So here are my final colors. I'm gonna read the names and then I will show you up close. I have Buff Titanium, Cypress Burnt Umber Deep, Nickel Titanate Yellow, Mummy Transparent Red, Azo Red, Indian Red, Autumn Green, and Danthrone Blue, and Indigo Blue. And then I also include their number just so that I have some kind of reference for it. So let me bring, up, bring, bring you up close. Isn't that yellow pretty? I really like that yellow. Those look like beautiful fall colors to me, those orange reds and that deep color. And then there's autumn and danthrone and indigo. Now let's have a look at that azo color here. This was the one with all that like metallicness in it. Do you see just a little bit? Like when you're looking at it flat, it really doesn't show all the water droplets and lifting but I'm not really seeing a metallic sheen like, like it did in the color. I'm wondering though if, we, if I use it a little differently and mix it with something if that metallic will show because it even didn't show down here in the lighter value. I would love to know which color was your favorite and how you would use it. As always, if you were inspired, please like, comment, or subscribe. My channel would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.